the one thing that I will say is that despite the fact that we, um, there was a lot of wins on the Democratic side, and there was a lot of wins for, I feel, humanity, because right now the Republican Party seems to not be humane. They seem to be immoral. They seem to just not want to do what's right in the span of what's happening in this country and society and the world in this planet Earth. Um, there definitely was a loss, okay? And it was a loss for the progressive party and the Democratic Party, but it was also a win for Amazon. And I love that a lot of people were asking, how did Amazon win? How did Amazon win? Well, taking it to a good friend of mine, um, taking it to a good friend of mine, Calvin. Hope you're watching, Calvin. We're going to his neck of the woods. Uh, he's actually best friend. Taking it to Seattle, Washington. And Seattle, Washington is, uh, you know, has been plagued by Amazon and the homelessness. I'm going to show a video in a little bit of Jordan, what he recorded, because I think it's just a good reminder of what's happening in Seattle, just so that you can know. And what happened was, is in Seattle yesterday, um, I, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, but a city council member by the name of Sharma Sawant, I hope I'm saying the name right, apologize if I'm not, who has been a a, a true progressive in the span of, of just wanting, you know, understanding that $15 an hour is the minimum wage and needs to be the minimum wage, understanding that we need a green deal, understanding that she was trying to enact that for Seattle, for the, uh, the, 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 um, sort of, um, um, the city reigns there, the city boundaries there. And she was trying to get a green deal so that city so Seattle could be more green. Um, and a bunch of other things that, you know, Medicare for all she supported. I believe she supported student loan, uh, being student loan forgiveness and a bunch of things. And she had been there, I believe, since 2013, if I'm not corrected. That's when she first took office. And about a year and a half ago, um, Amazon, and I, I want to actually go back, Tim Flobug, Kashwama, Kashwama, Sawant. Thank you so much. I, I want I was looking for that. I wanted to do that. Um, I wanted to do that. Um, she uh, has been that champion in Seattle. She has been on the city council. She has blocked several things that Amazon was trying to do in terms of she um, um, housing and something that was super important. She was the one who she was one of the voices that spoke up against Amazon. <laughs> not paying taxes and we all know amazon hasn't paid any taxes hasn't paid any taxes they've used the idea that because they employ so many people and because they give so many people uh, opportunities and whatever the case may be that they shouldn't pay taxes and the, the fact of the matter is is that amazon should employ the people they employ and pay taxes because they can afford it I mean, if they paid taxes, I'm sure they would still be one of the wealthiest countries, co uh, companies in the world. Like, that would be a hands down. Like, whatever. However, um, she spoke out against Amazon all the way. Uh, against the things that they wanted to do. Over the last year, Amazon has spent $1.5 million, million dollars to make sure she was not reelected. And everybody says 1.5 million is not that much considering it's campaign, but you're talking about a city council seat. City councils aren't spending millions of dollars on campaigns. They're the ones footwork, they're going door to door, they're knocking, they're making phone calls. They're not spending, They might. you might see a city council. I know here in New York, I don't think I've ever seen a city council commercial besides on New York One, where New York One only charges about a couple of thousand dollars for like two or three weeks of running, if I'm not mistaken media knowledge coming in handy there um city councils don't spend a lot of money they don't have the money to send it amazon spent 1.5 million dollars to make sure she didn't get elected and to them that's a speeding ticket that's for for everybody else has a parking ticket the speeding ticket for her it really didn't it really took her out and the thing that i want to say is that the race was pretty and i'm gonna say the race was pretty close I look at it and I say, that was a win for Amazon because the person who they elected, the person who's in Mr. Orion, 
He supports Amazon. He said it multiple times over multiple campaigns. There's multiple things that he said that I want Amazon in the Seattle area forever. Like he believes that that's good for the Seattle area. And this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say devil's advocate here. Okay. And I know a lot of people may not find this popular, but here's the bottom line. Amazon is something that I'm sure everybody uses. And if you don't use it, it's because you just like morally, you don't want to do it. But at the end of the day, Amazon is making a lot of money and they have money that whoever is president in 2020, hopefully at this point, Bernie Sanders, they're going to have to pay taxes and they're going to have to pay back taxes. And I actually love that because then they're going to have to pay penalties and those penalties are going to go to the American economy. Those penalties are going to help the middle class and the poor class and anybody else because they're going to have to pay for it. That's the point of getting a president in here who believes that Amazon needs to pay taxes. I don't want to see Amazon go away. I want to see Amazon change their ways because truthfully speaking, I use Amazon all the time. Unfortunately, it's a lot hard, hard, it's a lot easier than me getting to the store, which I don't have time to do. And I order things from Amazon and, and sometimes I'm like, oh man, I don't really want to do it, but they have what I need and the price is reasonable and I don't have to go to the store. So I'm hoping that whoever gets in says, dude, company, you got to pay taxes and now you got to pay back taxes. So that's what we're hoping for. So I want to play this video and then we're going to come back to this topic. Jordan did this uh, uh, quite a while ago. I think it was before I got here. I love this interview because at the end of the day, I believe that um, it hits on exactly what we're talking about. So have a seat, enjoy this and let's go. Uh, you see some of the tents around here. And uh, what's your name, sir? Sense. Sense? Oh, Sense. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we were talking. You've been at this location now for about six months, you said? Yeah. So uh, Monday they're coming to sweep it up. We've been seeing that a lot. So can you kind of talk about what you're dealing with now? Because you ha you've been here for several months, but now it's kind of like, where do you go when the city's coming in trying to sweep people out? Yeah, it just sucks because like we've kind of, we finally like gathered enough stuff and got enough things to where we like, we've accumulated some nice things. We have like a little home set up, but now we're having to tear it all down. And the biggest hassle is now that I have all this stuff accumulated and I have some nice things, you know, between me and my girlfriend, where are we going to put it? How are we going to get it from here to another spot without other people stealing it? You know what I mean? Um, where are we going to set up? Is the spot that we set up and going to get, you know, are we going to get told to leave in a half hour's notice like we did at Green Lake or, you know, a week out from now, are they going to come and, you know, sweep us again? And it's just a struggle because we don't know exactly where to go. If we knew where we could go and set up and have some ground rules established, you know what I mean, and some criteria to follow, then, you know, we would, like, set a standard, then we could, you know, set that goal and, you know, try and maintain a little community there. But... It's just a struggle because, you know, it's one thing for us to try and police our own stuff, but when we don't have anywhere for sure, you know what I mean, people can say, oh, well, screw you, you know, you don't own this area, you can't tell us how to do, yada, yada, yada. And so it's just it's just a pain. Do you feel like the city of Seattle or the state are trying to actually help folks like you or just kind of get rid of you? get rid of homeless people honestly i feel like they're just trying to corral us in spots where they don't have to see us or or you know throw us in jail if they can for whatever reason you know i think i think i think local law enforcement looks for whatever excuses they can to kind of throw us in throw us in jail you know and uh to get us out of the way and the rest of us you know they just kind of corral the different spots you know where people don't have to deal with them yeah and uh kind of talk to me about your story uh you're from a couple like a half hour away from here? Yeah, I'm, I'm initially, I'm, fr I'm from Yelm, it's a few hours south of here, and uh, they have like zero resources out in Yelm. And it, it just seems to me like you drive around these communities and it's all like fancy new housing, yet right next to that fancy new housing and nice neighborhoods is like just endless amounts of, of basically tent cities where people are homeless. Do you think that's in part because of business has come here and Amazon has come here and all that and driven up prices to the point where people can't live. I mean, they got 12 freaking Google buildings down on the on the waterfront, you know what I mean? And you see a couple of tents pitched out there even, you know? But um, I don't know, it's nuts because, I mean, you see so much stuff out here and it's just surprising to me that they don't have something, like they have a couple of little tiny house areas, you know what I mean? I'm surprised they don't have a certain area that 
you know what I mean, they couldn't tell us that we could stay in and kind of police ourselves or whatever, you know what I mean? Because there's plenty of room out here, you know? Mm-hmm. I just, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, what's your story? Did you just like fall on hard times a couple of years ago or how'd you get into this situation? Um, I was actually in an apartment and um, I was, I was uh, asked to leave because I was, um, I was arrested on the property and that's my own fault, you know? I could have made different choices, but I made the ones that I made and it ended me up uh, being homeless again and there's just nowhere out in Olympia for us to go besides, you know, shelters where they clearly, w- they won't let us be together, you know, in a shelter because we're not married. And um, so we came out here just because, I mean, there's a lot more of us out here that are doing the same thing and it's cool to get a, a group of people with the same, you know, the same things going on and with, you know, they respect the same things and want the same things for each other, you know, it's just so like, Wherever we move, we're just going to keep basically my buddies, my girlfriend and I in a tight little group and so that we don't have to worry about people, you know, being little bedwetters and leaving all kinds of garbage and needles and stuff out and, you know, watch our own stuff. And a lot of the problem, I guess, was that the crime rate went up since we've been out here, which is probably true, you know. Um, but, yeah, so I'm, I'm just hoping that if it's just our own little group and we're not out car prowling and stealing shit and, you know, looking like a bunch of junkies leaving crap all over the place that hopefully they'll let us stay put wherever I find us you know to go next and uh other people you spoke to that are in your situation uh, other homeless people are people like willing to work if they could find a place to live are they willing to uh kind of like do things in the community uh because it seems like it's not for the most part people unwilling to uh work or do things they just can't afford to live anywhere Right, yeah, no, a lot of us are willing to work. I mean, I myself, there's a gentleman uh, two blocks over, and I, I've done his brakes on his van. I've, um, I've changed his oil. I tuned up his tuned up his van and changed all the spark plugs on it for him. Um, my buddy's actually a mechanic, too, and, like, we do odd jobs for people in the neighborhood. I mean, if we can find them that are willing to deal with us, you know, so it's not that we don't want to work. It, one of the factors is I don't I want to go out and look for a job and then you know come back and realize that hey in a half hour I had to have all my stuff and be gone again you know it's kind of difficult you know if you don't know where you can be at night to go out and go seek work in the morning when you don't know if your spot's going to be available for you to go back to sleep to when you get home you know would you have a message because obviously you know Jeff Bezos and Amazon there was efforts by the city to put a employer tax where companies like Amazon would have to pay a little bit more and that money would go towards uh, in large part the homeless uh, issue and trying to get people more housing Uh, they fought like hell against that Amazon you got a message for Mr. Bezos or Amazon as far as seems to be a real indifference to to people like you and your struggle yeah um, he's not gonna waste any energy on us I'm not gonna waste any energy on him to even say anything so my last question is uh, can you kind of talk about Uh, You're here with your girlfriend. You said your friend. Um, There's a lot of people, like we were in downtown Seattle last night, and you see people kind of lying in the streets, uh, just passing homeless people, and it's kind of like every, it's kind of normal here, you know? People just pass, and it's just part of life. What would you want people to know uh, that are kind of just passing you guys in the street and not really thinking much of it? Uh, What kind of things do you need from the rest of the community and the country? Uh, to know about, you know, what you guys are really about and trying to do. You know, just some understanding that, you know, um, everybody has different stuff going on in their lives. And, you know, I understand we all made those choices and put ourselves in those situations. But, um, like, we can all come from those situations. Like, I've been in this situation and worse situations before and gotten back on my feet. And it's just a matter of, uh, first and foremost, myself wanting to make change. But um, second of all, having any support, you know, support's huge. You know, you make the right moves. If people support you, you want to keep going in that direction, you know. You know, looking at that video, and this is something, I've seen the video before. um, Because uh, definitely seen the video, definitely understand where that gentleman is coming from. We all out there, and I've said it before on air. We make mistakes, bad choices, things lead to situations that maybe don't take us to the right place we want to be. But, you know, homelessness is not something to be taken lightly. I see people on on the street and, you know, if I have, I'm the type of person, if I have a food, if I have sandwich, I have something that I can give them, 
I'm giving it to them. I can always go get more. Some of these gentlemen, gentlemen and women cannot do that. And, you know, I'm always, hey, I want to give to people less fortunate than me. And, but at the end of the day, I only have but so much. And I think the point and the message that you get across the board is these billionaires, Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, several others, they have more money than any human being has. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm the type of person that I believe if you work hard for your money and you become a millionaire, multi-millionaire, billionaire, I believe there's nothing wrong with that. That's me personally. I believe that if you can have that ability to make that money, make that money. Okay? And I come from a family that didn't have money. I came from a family who had, you know, drug abuse and there was homelessness and there were relatives of mine that lived in the projects in Brooklyn and Queens. And you make that money. If there's some sort of talent or education or knowledge that you have that can get you wealth, make it. But I also am an, of, the, of the belief that when you make that money, give back to people. Don't hoard the money. Give to charity. Volunteer your time. Give what you can to make society better. That's what it is. And I always say that the, what's the point of having that money if you're just going to keep it and hoard it? No, I'm going to get that money and I'm going to spend that money. And I'm going to spend that money not to the point where I'm going to go out and party and everything, although I will have a beverage or two. Nothing there. But I'm going to make sure that when I get that money, I'm going to help others. Here's the bottom line. If you make a product and you are smart enough and working hard, and I'm not talking about inheriting money. I'm talking about working your butt off. Where Mr. Orange inherited money. I'm talking about working your butt off and that product just happens to give you a billion dollars or more. I don't see anything wrong with that. But like I said, you shouldn't keep that. You should be charitable and you should give to those who are less fortunate because that that's how you build your legacy. I want this city councilwoman to win.